we're out at Ted Mackin's place. We're checking out the guillotine, his new rocket fin alignment setup, alignment tool. Uh, it's comprised of a of a cradle with two V cuts in it. The rocket sits in the cradle. Once it's in the cradle, an, uh, another piece atop the rocket al aligns the fin perfectly on center with the rocket. Ted, you wanna you wanna disassemble it for me and right, describe boys and it? Girls, pay attention. <laughs> First I'm taking out the two shims that were for the thin alignment and then I'm going to loosen up the thin angles. Then the other component is this entire assembly will lift off, taking this rocket with it. Then we can pull this assembled rocket out of the mechanism and you can then see the two halves of the device. Going further, you can look down on the top assembly. Right now it's all loose and it doesn't look like it could do much of anything, but you'll notice there's a V groove on each of these cross beam angles. That is an alignment mechanism whereby you can insert a piece of th thin material into it. It will automatically adjust regardless of thickness. If I have this thickness, which is 330 seconds, it will find the center. If I have two thicknesses, say I had a 3 16th inch thin, it will also find the center on that. So it's only limited by the width of the V as to what thin it will accept. And that's all we've got. So this is this piece here is the is the basic cradle. It's the base, and it's very similar to just a standard rocket cradle. Or airplane cradle. Correct. A, a, uh -huh. a V. Uh, anytime you set something into a V, it'll automatically find itself into the mechanism. Right. In use, and going back now, I'll take this entire assembly, and it sets down yeah. Yeah. into... It's actually easier to do this one at a time until you get everything lined up. Okay. Take that off for now. Okay. When the cradle's all the way, or when the upper mechanism is all the way in its lower position, it leaves one aperture. Like a, like a guillotine or even like an iris on an old camera. When, hold you that, lift hold that up it, again. when you lift it, that opening changes. But the axis, the diagonal of that square is constant vertically. Correct. Yes, absolutely. Okay, in use, and we'll start off. This is the lowermost or booster section of an Estes mean machine. It's been pre-marked. The thin locations have been drawn on. The motor mount is installed. I've highlighted one thin line and drawn it all the way through so you can see how it works. You lift it up until it's open enough to house it and you drop it in place. You can then rotate it to where it's spot on centered. Well, I'm going to have to disassemble this, the same problem I had before. Pesky washer. Yes. Together. Are you ready to film I'm again? I'm shooting again. Let me know when you're ready to go. I'm ready. You Can't ready? We're rolling. We're back, boys and girls, and here we go. All right, the first thing I do is loosen up these top fins, the top angles, and slide in to the V-groove, a piece of material the same thickness as the thin that I'm going to be using on 
this mean machine booster. We do that on each end of the device. It may take some readjustment once we get one end in and then the other. Keep in mind this is a prototype device and not the final product. Once those are tightened down on each end, you're pretty much spot on. The weight of the device itself will trap the body tube in place, but to be on the safe side, you can tighten up the wing nuts on each end to prevent anything from sliding around and losing your position. There, and there's going to be some improvements made down the line, which will yeah. say the same thing again. Streamline the operation. Say, say you say that part again that you can tighten the wing nuts up and do the, do that one over there. There you go. Perfect. Okay, you can tighten these wing nut, nuts up to ensure that the nothing moves once it's set. Okay, we are now set into position. As you can see, you can still rotate the body tube. I have purposely given a ink line on the first thin location that we're going to glue in place shortly so that it can be seen on camera. Okay, we will take our first thin, slide it into position. I've also placed a piece of tape on the body to mark the one inch dimension which is what the design calls for. Now if you're off a little bit you can rotate it. When that line is on when the thin location is online, you're online. If you look dead on, you can see that the thin is perfectly in line with the center point axis of the body tube. Okay, that's all there is to it. We would glue this in place, which we will do shortly. Let it set. Then you slide it out, rotate it, and go on to the next tube. Once you have all the adjustment set, you don't have to monkey with anything, it's there. And because the tube will slide in and out and, and rotate, you're good to go. It gets it lined up and it holds it in place while it right. sets. And when, you do, when you're done, while well, you're done, and you get to do what Doug is doing, polishing off the Miller Lite. <laughs> Alright, go ahead, we're shooting. Okay, we're ready to uh, install the first thin, glue it in, we got a little bit more glue than we need, but that's the nature of the beast. My biggest challenge today, Ted, is remembering to get the camera watching you instead of me watching you. Right. I um, just don't have quite enough well, video experience. Good help is hard to find, Doug. You know, I took this class in high school back when it was quite the novelty. Alright, another nice thing about epoxy is it gives you a little setup time. I do not like cyanoacrylates for that very reason. Well, not only that, they're brittle. I think epoxy is a far better material strength-wise. you got just the right amount on there too, I think. I'd bump that about a sixteenth of an inch forward. I think that's spot on. I think it's perfect. Now I think what we do is go have some fun for 10 or 15 minutes, let that epoxy cure. We'll be ready to go the next fan. By the way, this cup was courtesy of Sands Club Sample Department. It had <laughs> chicken in it yesterday. <laughs> All right, we're rolling. Okay. All right, the first spin is set, and we should be able to slide it right out of the mechanism. Just slide the body tube out so you can rotate it. Then we'll rotate it. I'll just do it clockwise to the next spin location. Slide it back approximately where it needs to be. And we'll mix up some more epoxy. And set another one. 
we're cooking. Okay, you're going to apply some of the glue to the second fin. Okay, and then we're going to insert it into the dual angles. Slide it down on the body tube. Set it to length. Rotate the body tube until the pin is on line. That should be good to go. Doug and I are going to go see if we can find some more beer. <laughs> We're rolling. All right, here we go, boys and girls. Fin number three, two beers. Teddy is putting it in place. You know, Ted, that sure does make it look easy, doesn't it? We're done. You just slide it in, and you're done. There's. I'm a little off on the one thin. That's probably the alcohol talking. <laughs> That's all right. We'll compensate for that when we put the other one on the other side. So, there we go. And Art, uh, Art Upton will like it. No rocket should be built without beer being present. Roll. We're rolling. All right, this is the fourth and final fin. Going down, and it's there. And now I need to find my mark. That looks pretty good. And there's the last fin. Not perfect, but this is a prototype. Looks pretty dang good, Ted. And neither am I, so there we go. Well, my eyes are kind of screwed up, so I think I think it's pretty dang square. See, that's the thing. Say you that. Should, you should say, say that. Say that one more time. That's good enough to demonstrate the work. It would really be nice if I hadn't been drunk. Just imagine what I could have <laughs> I don't think two beers constitutes drunk. Unless your blood sugar's jacked way up. Well, anyway, we'll let that sit for a while and then we'll pull it out and uh, pull Excellent. The, pull the mark. We're rolling. Okay. Let's take this thing out of the device and see how she looks. Off. This is 25 millimeter tape, which as everyone knows is just four tenths of a millimeter shy of an inch, which they said to make it an inch. It's close enough for rocketry. That's right. Well, it's four tenths of a millimeter between friends. Love that blue tape. Well, there it is. Let's see how she sits on the table. Well, it won't because we've got that little Estes hook there. 